This filing cabinet is about to get a new lease on life. When I'm finished, it's gonna look something like this. I'm going to remove the hardware, sand it, drill holes for wheels, discover some errors that need repair, and make a whole bunch of trips to the hardware store. When I'm finished, I'll tell you what it cost. I probably should have just bought a new one, but what fun would that have been? There are a lot of DIY videos for filing cabinet makeovers, but none with wheels, none in the Caribbean, and none that cost more than a few dollars. I think this is going to cost more than a few dollars, but we'll see what that comes up to at the end. Okay, so let's get started. This is a number eight wrench that we're using, and we are going to open the drawer, and this is how we take the handles off. Very easy. You just take the wrench, hold the screw head on the other side, unscrew the bolt, comes off nice and easy. Just repeat that with all the handle bolts, and your hardware should all be off and ready for the next step. Next step are the nameplate holders. At first, I couldn't quite figure this out, but it was quite easy. I used a flat tip screwdriver, I wedged it underneath the front face of the nameplate and very gently popped it out. I hope they go back in as easily as that. Here's the nameplate removed and the handles. I'm going to give them all a clean with soapy water and a light sand before I spray them so they're pretty much ready to go. I've done a few projects using metallic spray paint and it's not easy to get that bright true metallic shine but this one I highly recommend. It really give a nice bright brilliant shine. And here they are. I watched a few videos to try and figure out how to get the drawers off but I didn't really have much luck so those are gonna have to stay on. And the lock. I don't know if I have a key for it. I'm going to search around for the key, but if not, I am going to look for a new lock so I can replace this, but I'm just going to spray over it. I'm using this rust preventative enamel paint. It's supposed to come off flat, but take a look. Too much shine. This is not going to work out for me. I got a little ahead of myself and decided to spray it after my first round of sanding. I had 120 grit sandpaper. I should have gone with an 80 grit to start to really eat off that rust and as you can see on the surface you can kind of see the texture of the rust that didn't get pulled off there's just that one little area that's kind of bright that I did get down to the steel and I can see how smooth it is so I definitely um, when I do my second cabinet I am going to really use a much rougher grade sandpaper to go at this before I apply my paint but I'm gonna stick with this I'm gonna sand the rest of it down though with the 80 grit that I did end up getting and we'll see how it goes here's what we look like after 80 grit sanding not bad dealing with the wheels now these bolts screws and washers are leftovers that I went to the hardware store with the screws are fine almost the same size as what I went with they fit into the holes nicely it's these these bolts have this little plastic stopper thing inside, as you can see. And plus, they're two different ones. These were all in my bag that I bought, but as you can see, they're two totally different bolts. So I had to go back to the hardware store to change these out. Take a look at this. I screw it on, and the little plastic thing stops it. It can't go any further than this. So these can't work. They'd be good for some other projects, but this definitely isn't going to work for what I'm trying to do, so they got to go back. This hook and loop 8 hole 5 inch sanding pad is from North Coast Hardware. It's what my sander uses. This other one that you see is a 5 hole. The difference is that, as you see, my sanding pad has an 8 hole pattern, so I need to use an 8 hole pad. That's where the vacuum suctions up. The 5 hole, which I got at Kennedy's Hardware, yeah, it doesn't fit the whole pattern, so not as much dust gets suctioned up into the pad. And it worked, but I made out. Now, you got it. This is why you have to shop around. Those are $31.54 at Kennedy's versus $12.95 at North Coast Hardware. Wow. This is GE Premium Silicone Glue. It's available at Kennedy's for $22.55. I picked this up while I was there getting the sandpaper and I was using it to fix, do some repairs on the cabinet. The cabinet had some loose sides. You'll see here, I actually already fixed it on, so it's 
already kind of adhered so it's holding on quite nicely but this section was loose and I didn't want to put the wheels on without it you can see this side is still loose I'm going to pop some of that glue on there this stuff is fantastic it adheres to glass metal plastic it works really well it sets fast so I'm really happy with this and this is part of the preparation that really must be done before you continue aren't they pretty this is the end of part one